Since ChatGPT was first launched, the topic of healthcare has been a really big area. And shortly after it was announced, we even had people over at Stanford creating a PubMed GPT, which essentially was trained on all publicly available medical journals and was going to be, you know, something that was going to help you with uh, medicine. But of course, this was just a research project and it did not go anywhere. So today on the podcast, I want to talk about a new company that has come to the forefront called Glass Health. And this is a company, an AI that is building um, an AI for suggesting medical diagnosis. So today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about the quality of these diagnoses, um, the implications in the industry, and where we see this going in the future. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist. In addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested Interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Back in 2021, the healthcare tech landscape saw a very interesting new company, and that's Glass Health that I mentioned in the intro to this. So founded by Derek Paul, who's a former medical student at UC San Francisco, and also Graham Ramsey, who is an engineer at Women's Health Company, a Modern Fertility. The company initially launched as a notebook for clinicians. So the notebook aimed to help medical professionals store, organize, and share their approaches for diagnosing and treating various conditions. So Ramsey articulated that the original goal was to create a, quote, personal knowledge management system for doctors serving as an evergreen resource throughout their career. Now, this is really interesting um, because you see a lot of the companies that are really succeeding right now in AI are companies with data and it's really interesting because this is a company right it's from the very from the beginning they were collecting data they're allowing doctors to store a lot of their you know quote unquote is, is like doctors were able to dump all of the everything that they knew um onto a page and uh this is where they're gathering a ton of data so this is what ramsey said quote during the pandemic we witnessed the overwhelming burdens of our healthcare system and the worsening crisis of healthcare provider burnout uh, that was actually paul that said that and said our empathy for frontline providers catalyzed us to create a company committed to fully leveraging technology to improve the practice of medicine. So back in 2001, they you know got this whole thing kicked off. And then in 2023, Glass Health took a, a pretty big pivot. So leveraging the upward trajectory of generative AI, the company shifted its focus. Now the platform is powered by a large language model that can assist in generating diagnoses and treatment options for clinicians. So physicians can input descriptions like patient demographics and symptoms and Glass Health's AI offers a likely prognosis and clinical plan. This is really interesting. And also, I think this is important to talk about because this is what we're seeing. Like th this is this trend is all over tech right now, where essentially you had this company founded back in 2021, probably raised money at a at a very high valuation. Um, maybe they weren't seeing the product market fit they were wanting, or maybe they just saw some, you know, new opportunities in AI and, and kind of did a big, huge pivot. And now it's like, oh, yeah, we're just like a an AI company to help, you know, diagnose things for doctors like, duh, that's just what our company is. But, I, I you know, obviously, it's not what it started as. And I think, you know, this is a no brainer. Um, any startup that I was really actively involved in as, you know, the beginning of the year came around and we saw this big, huge wave of AI. Yeah, immediately all of them turned into AI companies. We just integrated AI into everything we're doing and uh, completely changed our product. So, uh, you know, I'm not calling the kettle black and I actually think it's great because there, there's a whole bunch of... Here's the thing. 
for a company go to go from zero to hero or zero to a hundred, right? Like completely fresh and then come up with a revolutionary idea takes a lot of time. It takes energy to get investors or to get the team put together to actually build the product. And if a company is already like, let's say they have some version of product market fit, they have users, they have a database, they have uh, some sort of user base, and then they're able to add in AI features. Like one of my one of my uh, companies I had when AI started hitting the forefront, it was two weeks before we had some like major AI products. Um, and that's just because we already had all the infrastructure, the logins, the sign-ins, the client base, like we, we had everything built out and then immediately were able just to start building these AI features and adding them on top of what we already had. And it felt like a very robust uh, system. Now, if we had thought of the idea uh, for what we had right like when AI, when ChatGPT came out, we'd probably still be under development working on building, um, you know, what what is now, what was, you know, we were able to get done in two months. So I think this is awesome. I think this is something we're going to see in the future. Um, this is definitely a trend and, you know, good on Glass Health for kind of seeing this and grabbing this traction. So I think while AI's promise in healthcare is quite, um, you know, it looks very attractive. It's not without some of its caveats. So Babylon Health, which is an AI startup backed by UK's NHS, has faced a lot of criticism for essentially making inflated claims about its capabilities. So Glass Health's offering might also bring about, you know, some ethical concerns. Of course, there's, you know, people talked about data biases um, as the AIs trade on health records that could be influenced by different, um, you know, racial, gender, socioeconomic biases. Um, but you know, it, it's like, I guess you kind of have to ask yourself even like geographically, right? Like, uh, the AI might be trained on the United States and maybe the diet of the United States is completely different than the diet in, let's say a country like Argentina or Ethiopia or France, right? Like there's all sorts of different factors. And if, you know, an AI is specifically trained just on one area, maybe it's going to miss some things that are relevant, um, to people in other places. So there's all sorts of like things to look at in that regard. But in any case, addressing a lot of these challenges, Paul emphasized saying, quote, Glass connects LLMs with clinical guidelines that are created and peer reviewed by our academic physician team. Our physician team members are from major academic medical centers around the country and work part time for Glass Health. We ask our clinician users to supervise all of our LLM applications outputs closely, treating it like an assistant that offers helpful recommendations. Here's one other thing I did want to bring up on this whole, like, uh, you know, like, like people essentially are kind of poking holes in what these models are not able to do. And I think, sure, like, it's totally fair um, if, you know, like, make sure if a model saying it can do something and it isn't like you're holding them accountable to being like truthful, whatever. I, I get that. But the people that just want to criticize to, for criticism's sake, I will say to those people, like, right now, um, of course, even like my my thing of like, oh, you're living in a different geographic area and maybe the model was just trained on Americans and there's like differences between people that live in other places. So here's the thing. Current medicine and current medical journals, which is where a lot of doctors get their information, may just very well have the exact same problem. So it's just all about the data. And what I think is interesting is it's probably actually AI models that could help solve this problem in the future. You can imagine an AI model like this that diagnoses diseases, but it asks you exactly where you're from. It looks at all the latest data from that specific area, studies in your specific ge like geographic location, specifically for your body type, your ethnicity, your you know background, everything. I've heard a lot of like talk about you know uh, people saying like, oh yeah, like my ancestors used to eat potatoes and your ancestors used to eat rice and yada yada. So today, like my body can digest this or that better. And uh, you know, there's all sorts of interesting things like that. And I mean, I am definitely not a nutrition coach. I'm definitely not a medical expert with medical advice or anything. And so, I mean, I can't tell you exactly how accurate that is, but I've heard things like that in a lot of different areas. And uh, what I can say is our current approach um, of medicine and everything else, we definitely are just treating everyone like the exact same, like, oh, you have X, Y, and Z. Okay, here's the pill for X, Y, and Z, where it might not actually work as well on you for your type of, you know, body or whatever. So I think the cool thing about a lot of this AI is I think it does have the possibility of becoming uh, more customized, more per personalized to you. And I know right now people might be like, yeah, right, like look at ChatGPT, it's got all sorts of errors and problems. It's like, give this give this tech like five years, 10 years, um, 
if we don't figure out any way to make it better other than to make it more personalized, I think we're going to see some really incredible advancements and uh, it's going to be a lot more effective at, you know, doing whatever it needs to do just based off of like, you, let's say you train an AI specifically for you, everything about you. It's got your like, you know, your genealogy in there, like whatever. I don't know. Right. But it can really dial in on what it thinks can help you best. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, it may not be there right now, but that's definitely where this stuff will go in the future. It's going to seem like, you know, a no brainer in the future that, you know, it's going to seem crazy that at one point the entire world used one giant model called chat GPT and everyone had like the same thing with the same data set, whatever. So I think it'll be interesting to, to see how that evolves. I think despite all of these complex complexities, Glass Health has already secured a significant market validation. So they just did a $1.5 million pre-seed round. Um, but led by Brayer Capital back in 2022. And this was followed by acceptance into Y Combinator's winter 2023 batch. I think this certainly adds weight to their venture. Um, and also, I think with more than 59,000 users and a direct to clinician monthly subscription offering, Glass Health is positioned for growth. I think the company plans to launch an electronic health record integration enterprise, which is essentially offering um, with HIPAA compliance and already has 15 health systems on the wait list. So, Paul also commented on this and said, quote, Glass is different from LLM applications like ChatGPT that rely solely on their pre-training to produce outputs and can more easily produce medical information that is inaccurate or out of date. Um, and so I think while, you know, Glass Health navigates the choppy waters of this whole healthcare innovation and ethical AI use, it also continues to resonate with both investors and the medical community with a total of $6.5 million in funding and four years of runway. I think it's worth keeping an eye on how this kind of ambitious startup is, you know, going to potentially be redefining the role of technology in healthcare in the future. So definitely one we'll continue to follow. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.